assisted reproductive technology is usually just called ART or ART. Or you may have heard it called in vitro fertilization. If I could just spell. Or just simply IVF. Or it may have been called test tube babies. Okay, we said that we will start by talking about what, let's call it, normal conception. And we'll start with the uterus. So we've got our uterus down here, we've got a cervix, and we've got a vagina down here. And of course you know that each, supposedly, if it's normal, will have a pair of ovaries, and these are the oviducts. And under normal fertilization, then, the sperm is deposited down here in the vagina, and it's going to migrate through the cervix, up through the uterus, and up into the oviducts. One of the things that happens is that supposedly once a month that these oviducts will then turn around and release a single egg or possibly two eggs. So they have them on our ovary and one of these eggs will be released from the follicle and it will come down into the oviduct. And as it migrates and the sperm come up through the uterus, and they will meet in this area and fertilization will occur. Then the egg will start migrating down the reproductive tract and the egg will start to divide from this one cell that has been fertilized. It's called a, let's do this, one cell, and it's called a zygote, Z-Y-G-O-T-E, and it has two pronuclei inside. Then as it migrates down here, that one cell divides into two cells. It migrates and it continues in its migratory path. It will divide into theoretically four cells, eight cells, 16 and so forth, until it gets down to about right in this area and it's into a morula. On about the fifth day, this embryo will actually travel into the uterine cavity and start to implant into the wall of the uterus, right in through here, say. And by that day, it's probably day six or so, and it is now called a blastocyst. And that would be what we would call normal conception. We said that in performing in vitro fertilization, or ART, we are going to divide it into four steps. So let's say that this is, we're going to call this step one, and let's just call that retrieval. And we'll start again with our female reproductive tract. Remember, we're going to have a pair of oviducts, a pair of ovaries. We're going to have our uterus, a cervix, and a vagina. And the physicians, because you normally, a female will only ovulate one or two eggs per cycle, we would like to correct, collect more than that one or two eggs, so the physicians will oftentimes give 
follicle stimulating hormones to produce more eggs and eventually give them luteinizing hormones to turn around and mature the eggs and release those eggs. So just prior to the release of the eggs, which is about 36 hours, they're going to go in and retrieve them through ultrasound uh, needle aspiration. They will go in and they will put in an ultrasound probe into the vagina and they will have a, a needle that will literally be attached to there and go up into the ovary where the various follicles or fluid filled sacs are located that contain the eggs. They will then turn around and aspirate each of these fluid filled sacs and allow that uh, fluid plus the egg come back down through here and then this needle will be connected to a, a line that is then connected to a test tube. And that way you collect those eggs and then the test tube is taken to the embryology lab where the embryologist will then pour the uh, tube and its contents out and look for those aspirated eggs. Step Two, in assisted reproductive technology, we're going to call fertilization. Remember that in step one, the eggs were aspirated from the reproductive tract, placed in a test tube, and those test tube was taken into the embryo lab, where they were poured out under a microscope and obtained, found the eggs and then they are placed into an incubator and inside that incubator are petri dishes and this is where the actual eggs will reside or in here. What you need to understand is that a human egg has an outer shell called a zona pellucida and then inside that is cytoplasm in here, and the distance from here uh, is about 120 microns across. And that the human sperm is only about 2 microns this way, and maybe 4 to 5 microns from the size of the head. Now I need you to remember that for this next part called fertilization. Now when we left on the last few slides we had the M eggs sitting in an incubator inside a petri dish. And if, in fact, under normal what we call in vitro fertilization, you might have one egg in a particular spot and another one in another spot, depending upon the style of your dish, but we turn around and apply approximately 20,000 to 40,000 modal sperm per egg into these various drops within the petri dish. And that would be considered IVF. Now, if in fact that the male partner cannot produce sufficient numbers of 20 to 40 million or 20 to 40,000 modal sperm per egg, then the embryologist has to do something else and that is called intracytoplasmic sperm injection, or we just call it ICSI. Okay, now let's talk about ICSI. ICSI. And this is all done under a microscope.
And what we're going to do is that we're going to take that embryo, that egg, excuse me. Remember we said that it's like, has a zona pellucida on the outside, and we said this is about 120 microns across here. And we're going to take one glass needle that is called an aspiration needle, and it's got suction involved in here. And so we're going to hold this egg with suction, so the suction is pulling the egg this direction. And then we're going to take a very fine glass needle and we're going to inject that sperm directly into the cytoplasm of this egg into here. And once you pull that glass needle out, then you have completed intracytoplasmic sperm injection. And this egg then goes back into the incubator just as if it was an IVF or an in vitro fertilized egg. And this then would complete what we call step two fertilization. So we have two methods to do that. It's either ICSI or IVF. Now what you're about to see is an actual ICSI procedure with a holding pipette on the left and an insertion needle on the right. And take, look closely into the insertion needle. You can see a sperm being inside that tube. The needle has now gone into the cytoplasm, but we have to make absolutely sure we're in the cytoplasm and not on the outer membrane. So we will perform an aspiration and pull the sperm back out. Watching very closely, you'll see also coming out with the sperm is cytoplasm. There is the cytoplasm being pulled out. Now we're going to inject it back into the egg along with the sperm. Pull the needle back out and ICSI is complete.